Hey guys, welcome back to the Talks by Teach Me podcast, and we have a guest speaker here with us today, Maya Hughes, who is an author of so many books, but specifically, one of the books that we chose for our buddy read this month is The Perfect First. So we have a bunch of questions for Maya, and Heather and Jasmine and I are here just to discuss for probably about half an hour, so stay tuned for all of the answers. Welcome, right, welcome. So- We're so excited to have you. All right, so we have our first question. Just introduce yourself and tell us about your books. Um, Yeah, sure. So I am Maya Hughes. I am an author, mom of three, wife of one, um, (laughs) my husband, (laughs) husband, Mr. Maya. Um, And yeah, I started writing in in 2017. And yeah, I sort of, sports romance is one of the things I love to write, college sports romance, that sort of thing. And dabbling here and there with other things. But yeah, that's sort of, I was a romance reader for so many years before I started writing. And then I decided to just go for it. That's so awesome. I'm a mom of three too. So I feel you it's like a connection <laughs> on a whole nother level. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've tried and convincing my husband sense. to be a husband more than, or a wife to more than one, but you know, <laughs> he's not onto that RH world yet. So not I'm, yet. I'm, I'm, I know. For now. <laughs> it is. It's tempting. It's tempting when you're like, hmm, those stories, you're like that. I can't believe if they were like that. If they were like those guys, it would be a yeah, tiny well, different Yeah, well, he asked me the other day, he's like, would you do it? And I'm like, honey, it's hard finding was one of you. Like, <laughs> how am I going to find another one? Yeah, so. yeah. Exactly. All right. So what inspired you to write The Perfect First? <laughs> So I actually like wrote about this in my newsletter way back when I was first telling about the story. So I was a little bit like, so this was a little bit inspired by real life um, in a way. (laughs) (laughs) All of my friends were studying abroad my junior year of college and I was really, really bored. And I had like never really been out on an actual date, like a real like you know, he, he takes you, like, it was just been like, oh, we're hanging out, that kind of thing. And so I'd never been on a real date. And so I decided, I was like, hmm, what can I do to, like, have a real date? And so I posted on, like, a campus forum in a way, in a very, like, I used tons of, like, nerdy sci-fi, like, movies and different things like that to sort of, like, um, for me, figure, like, okay, I'm going to attract a certain type of guy with these types of things. I'm talking about like Battlestar Galactica and Star Trek and like Star Wars, those types of things that I liked just to sort of be like, all right, I'm not going to get like, you know, the dude bros to, to, to respond to this. <laughs> and so then I like, I got a lot of responses, which was surprising. And I created a little spreadsheet. So I have a little bit of Seth in me with the spreadsheet creation. Yes. I love the it. List. <laughs> yeah. And I went out on like a few different dates on campus and it was really actually very fun. That is so awesome. (laughs) That's amazing. I love the meet cute in the perfect first. It was so original. I had never read or even heard of anything like it. And then it made me think back way back when. So when I went to college and I was like, how cool is this? I mean, I would never have had the balls to put myself out there. But that's the (laughs) coolest thing. And this reading Seth's like, courage and it was probably naive too but just her perspective of i want to put this out there and this is how i want to get guys to give me their stats Mm -hmm. so the fact that it's based on almost true right that's the coolest thing ever yeah yeah i I think it was also a bit of yeah it was a bit of also on my part naivete and then just like boredom where i was like well at least it'll be interesting (laughs) to read these emails read these messages like you know and so yeah like i but i love what I loved about, yeah, what you were saying about her is totally what I loved about her. And it, I'm sorry if I, like, if it seems weird when I talk about my characters like they're real people. But, no, like, they're, not at all. They're no, real. real. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, they're real. Okay. Reese yeah. and his Pikachu boxers are real to me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, so for me, yeah, for her, it was that kind of, like, well, what is the most logical way about getting this done? Like, most efficient and logical way to do this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do this. Like, yeah. Yeah, and it totally matched her it personality. It does. Like, that's how she thinks. I love that. <laughs> how did those dates go? <laughs> yeah. They went really well. Like, they were very nice. Some people, it was just, like, other people looking to hang out, like, went to the movies, went out to, like, 
coffee with a couple of people. What, well, I actually, the first guy I dated came out of that. <laughs> Out of my spreadsheet. So that's so it, cool. It was, wow. That's awesome. Where did you go to college? Uh, I went to college in the DC area. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm from Jersey, so Okay. Well kinda... I'm from Jersey. Where? What? Uh, yeah, South Jersey. Get out. Oh yeah. my god. Well, I went to Monmouth. Okay. <laughs> All right. But like almost twenty years ago. <laughs> um, and <laughs> i I live in Manville right now, so is that central? Yep. Okay. See, there is a southern Jersey person who lives in central. <laughs> you are officially like the perfect person now. Yeah, no, there. like because North they Jersey, always try to leave that out. Yeah, no. Oh, central so. Jersey definitely <laughs> exists. North Jersey thinks they're New York. South Jersey, we're like all about Philly. You know, Central Jersey, I feel like is the only true like New Jersey, New Jersey. Did you say yes. that, Heather? Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. This is where Rutgers is born. Come on. <laughs> Perfect. You are my hero. All right. Okay. So, um, do Reese and Seth cameo in other full team U books? And do the books pick up? Oh, excuse me. Do those books pick up where the perfect first left off? Yes. So, I think I'm pretty sure Reese and Seth are in all of the books. And then, yes, they all yes. are pretty much chronological. Yeah. Like they just it, oh, it just man. follows them all through. Some have a little bit of going back in time and forward in time, like. I don't know what reveal there was yet. I don't think there was anything yet about like book three and that, but anyway, yes, they are, they are throughout the series. Perfect. Oh, perfect. That I, was just I something love those really series loved. where you keep seeing couples that you love, like they just keep showing up. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that was, in case we didn't tell you, we gave this book five out of five stars. Yes. We loved it so Yay. much. And that was something that we specifically loved was, just that those side characters, how much they were immersed in the story exactly. and how much you got from them. And they were wanted all of their stories characters. too. Like you just got yes. invested. It's like, I need, I need his story. I need Burke's story. <laughs> like all of them. Yeah. And what's I'm crazy not, to me. I'm, go ahead. Oh, I'm waiting for LJ's story. <laughs> Marissa is holding on to his ball so tight and I, I need it. Well, and what's crazy is it doesn't. And what's hard for me is sometimes the story that, the characters that start the series for me aren't the characters I start with when it comes to the first book. Oh, so like, oh, I think cool. the series started for me in my head with Burke's book, but I was like, okay, I need to build to that book. So I can't yeah. just start <laughs> with his, like I need to give it time. So that's, what's really hard sometimes is like, I'll have a, you know, a series where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to sell this story. And I'm like, Oh crap, it's going to be book five. No, like, I'm, <laughs> it hurts me. It hurts me because I want to get in there and get to know this character and like really feel their story. And then sometimes I'm sitting there like, oh, I have to wait to write this. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, that, that's like we were talking before that, you know, in some like interconnected series, the side characters aren't that big in the featured book. And then except to like the end where they have like this big reveal that they have a story coming. Right. But with, you know, the perfect first they were so important. Like yeah. you fell in love with them. Mm -hmm. They were so. very much like a part of the story. Like it's like they were always together. They were just really close. So it's, yeah. I I loved it and I can't wait. We are definitely reading the rest of them. Oh, yeah. We are yeah. all of them. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> well, and one of the things that I think like found family is really something that I love to write. And I think a lot of times it's just because we don't get to choose our birth families, you know, we don't get to choose those people, but we can have people in our lives that come into, come into our lives at any point who become that kind of family we always wanted and needed and hoped for. And just, so that's sort of why I love to write those stories where those characters are so important to each other because they are, they live, they love each other. They're, they're together, you know, they're, they're family. They are. Yeah. And you did no, an amazing job with that because found family is one of my favorite things. Like when I'm reading, reading books, I love that aspect of, <laughs> it's just like you said, like sometimes you may not have any more family or you may have issues. Just like, like you said, that bond that you find with other people, it's, it's awesome. It's amazing. Like, you know, they become family. It's like blood doesn't make you family. It's all about that connection and that bond that you find with other people. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I was so, so happy that Seth found her people. Because in the beginning, I felt so bad that yes. she didn't have 
you know, those other connections and in college, I feel like is a great time to make them. And I was, I was just so proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. And I really, yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I was very proud of her character. And I think part of that came from like, when I said all of my friends studied abroad that junior year. So I think that feeling of like, there's literally no one here on campus that I know. Like, I think that's part of where it came from. And then it just grew from there and became her, you know, her, her finding her own way versus, versus my way. But yeah. Well, she found good people. She yeah. did. She did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, did you think this book would be as successful as it is and still being talked about years later? That question literally blows me away because I'm like, <laughs> was it really successful? Like, I know. It, yeah, sure. It did. But like, it, it, I did not. I did not know that it was a book that was considered like, oh, my gosh, this book was so successful and that. No, I, I guess I didn't realize what, what chord it would strike with people and how much they would enjoy it. And I had hoped, I mean, you always, I always hope that with my words, always, that people will connect with them and they will love them and they'll fall in love with the characters in the world. But you can never know until it's out mm -hmm. there. So you're kind of just like, I've created this thing. And then you like, let it free. <laughs> you're like sending it out I mean, into the world and hoping people are, you know, like, you know, get away from us. But they're like, yeah, we love you. And you said, that's always a wonderful feeling. It it is successful. I mean, we we're looking for highlighted books to, to feature here just, and to buddy read in general, because we do it with all, I mean, we've been doing it for over a year at this point. And we were looking for a sports romance. The thing that I loved about The Perfect First is that it wasn't like shoved down your throat sports romance. Yes. Like it had just the perfect amount of the sport and the passion that the characters had for that sport without going over the top. And I, that's what I personally loved about it. Um, but we also looked at like ratings and reviews and like how many people have reviewed it and rated it. And it just stood out. And it also happened that Brie bought it before she ever read it. <laughs> so, you know, it, to hear you say that you didn't think it was going to be, or even that like you didn't know that it really was, it's so awesome because it definitely is. And it's definitely something that we've been screaming about for the last week on social media. <laughs> yes, well, thank you um, so much. That. That's book. amazing. Oh, go ahead, Bri. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, I, I've seen The Perfect First recommended on Bookstagram from plenty of readers. And actually, um, we had posted like little spoilers with just like a piece of the book. So they couldn't see the full cover, and someone was like, "I know what that book is." It's like, that cover, so like you can't forget that cover. Like, yes, it's like the tiniest corner, and they're like, yeah. "I know." And I was like, <laughs> "It's just black. It's it's it, there's there's a one blue line on there. How do you know?" <laughs> well, and I have to say that cover. It was so funny because the cover was a total, almost a happy accident, uh, in a way, <clears throat> because I reached out to the photographer about that picture, and I was like, "It's great, perfect, love it. Can I have it in co color?" And he said, I don't have it in color. And I was like, how is that even possible? Like you, how do you not have it in color? Like, are you, did you, did you shoot it on film? Like, he, just like, he was just like, I don't have it in color. I only have it in black and white. And I was like, well, huh. I gotta, I, I gotta have it still. Well, so black I, and I white it realize. is. And that was sort of how it worked out. And I, I, I love it. You know, I love it. It worked out I, I love well. I would never have known. <laughs> Right. Have you yeah. guys seen the cookie? The cookie version? No, there's a cookie version. No. No. You haven't seen the cookie version? No, is that like no. a special like, edition? Down to down because, because special edition is it. like our addiction within an addiction when it comes to books. I will have to send you uh, a link to it. Um, yes, yes it was posted. But yeah, I did a cookie cover reveal of that cover. Um, so somebody, she like is a cookie artist. She did like some, her name was... Um, Oh gosh, Lucy Bakes, and she did. She won like some Food Network cookie competition. But before oh, that, oh. she actually created a cookie version of this cover. And yeah, that's so cool. That's cool. I will be ordering. Yeah, I, I am already that. waiting to order my signed copy of the Perfect First. <laughs> so the cookie version is going to get ordered. Well, no, they don't. Have, I think she, she. Wait, okay. She. I'm going on her website. Actually, awesome. <laughs> wow. Like, I go on her website, and it's like, here it is. I can create it for you. So I can send you. I'll email you. I'll email you the link. Thank that you. Awesome. Thank you. See, you know that your book is successful when there's a cookie version. Yeah. Oh. Like there's cookies. <laughs> 
Um, so you already uh, answered one of the other questions. So what is the favorite, your favorite book that you've written so far? I think it's hard. It's very hard. Um, right now, what jumps to my mind with that question is Burke and Jules's story. Sorry if that was a spoiler, but Burke's story, um, I really think that that is, that is, a, that is one that's, that's definitely a fade for me. It's got, you know, a special place in my heart. She's a curvy heroine. Um, love that. So I love that. Yes. So she's, <laughs> she's amazing. And he is, he's amazing. And yeah, that, that's a book where I, there were tears while I was writing that one for sure. I mean, I, I usually uh -huh. tend to cry with all of my books. <laughs> But, but there were definitely tears with that one. Um, All right. Yeah. I, I and could then, tell um, from Burke, like, yeah. I can only imagine how his story was going to be because I laughed out loud during the perfect first, but Burke was just, he was such a character. Like, I can only imagine how his book is going to go. And when you mention tears, it's something about the funny guys. Like, they always have that vulnerability, like, hidden deep. And it, it usually brings you to tears. Like, so I love it. Like, I can't wait to read his story. Yeah. Yeah. Brianna and doesn't the, like to cry, so I can only imagine the violence she's going to <laughs> when we're reading this. But me and Jasmine, I, I am not a crier, but when books hit me that way, I don't vert into violence. Jasmine, Jasmine is the I'm one the crier. Cries. Happy crier, sad crier. I'm, I'm the crier of the group, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the other is a, a, tr a trilogy that I wrote last year, um, which is... Um, that one was that one was a story that had been in my head. I woke up at 2 a.m. My son at that point must have been, I don't know, 18 months, two years old. And I like <clears throat> slipped out of bed because, of course, you had like climbed on top of me in the middle of the night. And I slipped out of bed and I grabbed my laptop. <clears throat> and I think I wrote like a few thousand words before the sun came up of that story. Just like I, I like had to get it out there. Yeah. And then me, myself, I had to wait like two more years before I could tell that story. So that was that was. <laughs> killing me but it was writing what that. trilogy is it the art of falling for you so it's the falling trilogy okay and what is that about like a quick rundown so it's like a fulton you spinoff um okay. i don't want to give you spoilers um <laughs> but yeah fulton you spinoff it's sort of a it follows them from high school through to life after so you get awesome. to see a lot of and it's a very yeah it's it's like an enemies to lovers then you've got second chance thrown in there and you've got a lot of a lot of different different elements brought in but yeah that one was that one was a lot of fun to write i love all the tropes yes and i love spinoffs too world. like i love that especially just wondering like who's it who's it going to be since we don't know so i'm excited yeah. for that <laughs> yes. so what's your favorite trope to read <laughs> to read and hmm. write <laughs> yeah, and right. <laughs> Favorite trope to read? That's hard. I mean, I think, I think I, I love. I mean, enemies to lovers. I feel like that's one that is just the banter, the friction, the yes. you know, all of that kind of stuff is is great. I also like to write it, but I do feel like I write it a little bit <laughs> differently. I always feel like mine is like enemies to lovers light. Like it's not like the full on like you know I'm gonna burn your house to the ground like everything you know like I'm, I'm gonna kill your dog level of like enemies to lovers like it's usually not that like extreme not dark not, not dark, dark. But not dark that, yeah. that's what I love about enemies to lovers like because you mentioned it being light but I feel like it can hit every point of the spectrum from light to dark and I love to laugh so I'm totally like in love with like rom com enemies to lovers. Because a lot of the times they can come off like, oh, I was not expecting that. Like, they, they surprise <laughs> you sometimes. So, I, like, enemies to lovers, I love it any way you give it to me. <laughs> See, but, and the good part, like, or funny part, real life marriage is like enemies to lovers. <laughs> I tell my husband all the time, I don't like you every day. I love you, but I don't like you every day. And it's real life. Like, you read these characters, and they're so angry at each other. And I'm like, thank you. He's like, you understand. <laughs> like, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that is totally true. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I, I love you, but I don't like you right now. Yes. <laughs> like, right now, you're a bad person. <laughs> Go mm -hmm. away. <laughs> yes. And what about to write, your favorite trope to write? I think it's... I know a lot of people don't like, or they, I don't know, 
a lot of people don't like friends to lovers. But like, oh, I no, sort of no, felt no. like the perfect first was kind of that friends to lovers thing. Yes, I think some people yes. feel like it's very, people, I guess, feel like it's, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've, I've heard that a lot of people don't like friends to lovers, but I do like to write that just because, I don't know, I like to write that and I like to write enemies to lovers. So I don't know. I guess I like writing both sides <laughs> of it work because I feel like even in friends to lovers, depending on the friendship, you can still have that kind of banter, that push and pull, that like, you know, yes. tension. Yes, and you can exactly. have it with enemies to lovers, just depending on the relationship yeah, no, and who I the characters agree. are. They were definitely friends, and I loved the buildup of their friendship. Uh, I was telling the girls in our first episode that Reese was, like, the perfect son that every mother wants. Like, <laughs> he had manners, he was a gentleman, he was not an ass. Like, I want my children to grow up to be a good human like he was. And he was a good friend. And it just kind of morphed. And reading that and, like, watching it unfold was perfect. So I would definitely say that it was a great friends to lovers. Yes. And just to add to um, what you mentioned uh, with the tension, I feel like friends to lovers, just depending on maybe how long they've been friends, is a lot of the times both of them like each other, but they're denying it for whatever reason. So it still has that kind of like tension. It may be a different kind of tension from enemies to lovers, but maybe because I'm a lover of all things. Like I love friends to lovers too, because it, it definitely hits different in the friction area, but it's still some there. And it's, it's like that great it's the greatest feeling like when you watch them finally like admitted to each other and they think everybody's gonna be surprised and we're like we were just waiting for y'all to <laughs> like everybody knows but them right mm-hmm. right right mm-hmm. yeah i i definitely agree i love the friends to lovers especially with um from the groups like those moments that are so good when the friends are encouraging or egging it on or they're like so you won't mind if i date them right. then. And they're like wait hold up <laughs> Let's, let's back up a step. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, obviously, the name is Talk Spicy to Me. So, we are talking about um, a range of spicy books. And we have sort of a scale of one to five um, peppers for how spicy a book is. And that does not take away from the plot or from how our overall rating of the book is. Mm-hmm. So, do you have a spicy recommendation? And it could be on any I of know. the scale of spiciness. Yes. Um, I was just looking through my Kindle, which is, like, 100%, like, romance. Like, I mean, <laughs> I would say 90%. I have some, like, you know, like, businessy type things or, you know, that kind of stuff in there. But, like, yeah, it is 95% um, romance because that's what I love to read. And I think I want to say there's – let me make sure I'm getting the author right about this book. Yeah, Claire Ken's last light um i would say it's probably well i don't know what the scale is considered like what what would you consider do you have a, an example of a five book and well, an we gave the perfect first two peppers okay because okay. it was it had their, like they had their own spice but mm-hmm. it wasn't like over the top kinky or you know <laughs> okay. bdsm like tie you to the bed type of stuff okay. um and it was sweet and cute, and exactly. there was a lot of emotion involved in the relationship and the buildup. Right. It wasn't necessarily like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was all about or their, bam, their bam, relationship. Thank you. <laughs> but they did have those moments of like, okay, Reese, I see you. Like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, okay, so the last, like, I would say then it, if then I would probably say it's probably about a, maybe a two and a half. Three. Okay. All right. It's, it's a post apocalyptic. And, and who did you say it was again? Claire Kent's Last Light. Okay. It's a post apocalyptic um, story, Ooh. which is Ooh. great. Like I tend to read when I'm reading. I usually tend to I tend to read a lot of like sci fi, post apocalyptic, that kind of that kind of thing. Which like the ice barbarians. Who love yes. like paranormal? So <laughs> I love yeah. post apocalyptic and um, you know fantasy reads. Um, Lindsay Pogue has some really good post-apocalyptic books, mm-hmm. um, and they're not super spicy, but the romance is, like, just there. It's really good. Have you read oh, Kylie Scott's post-apocalyptic? <laughs> what was that? Have you read Kylie Scott's post-apocalyptic? 
I didn't no. know she had yeah. any post-apocalyptic. Wow. Yes. I mean, I, I'm, I don't know if they're still, maybe they're not still up. I mean, I think I read them when they first came out, but they, she had a series that I, I mean, I loved it. I thought it was great. I am writing uh, all of these down. Right. Like I'm taking down called... names and titles. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's still up. The first one was called flesh. And then the second one was called skin. Those are two post-apocalyptic ones. You know what? Ooh. I think I've seen those titles and I did not realize they were uh, post-apocalyptic. Okay. They don't sound necessarily post apocalyptic. They don't like from the titles. Like I would never guess. (laughs) That's true. Yeah, and I do love. I know Heather, you were saying Ruby Dixon stuff. Like I've read literally every single one of her books. I love all of them. I so I stumbled upon them last year. Uh, Claire Kingsley puts out like a a readers challenge every month, (laughs) and one of the categories was like a sci fi, and I was like. I have never read, like, anything like that. So it was definitely out of my wheelhouse. So I'm searching and searching, and this cover of a blue man comes up. And I was like, well, I mean, if that's not sci-fi, then I don't know what is. <laughs> I read this book, and I put it down, and I immediately went to, like, our group tech, like chat, and I was like, I, I want a blue alien with a tail. Like, is that and okay? Fur. And it's fur. Yes, Very it's fur. It's fur. I need to know what this... It feels like in real life. Like, come on. And I'm, I'm sitting there. I was so dumbfounded because I was like, I loved it. It was so well, like, written as far as, like, getting me entrapped in the story. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, my God, that's the last page. Where's the next one? Well, and then I'm 42 thinking, more to read, okay? so. <laughs> like, I want a blue man. Like, that's okay. He has horns. <laughs> We're good. So, um, as far well, as for, oh, go ahead, Jasmine. Oh, I think I was going to take the question. Where you go? <laughs> oh no, I was actually going to add to the last one. Um, what is the spiciest book of yours? Oh, huh. that's a good one. <laughs> that is a very good question. <laughs> I'm not sure. The spiciest of mine. It might be Burks. <gasps> oh, okay. now I'm super excited. Right. <laughs> and I think his is next, yeah. right? Is it his the second one? Or... No, no it... his is no, the third. No, his is the third. Nick is third. next. Burke is third. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think either Burke's book or the third um, <laughs> King's book. That might be the, the which is, um, uh, which is Emmett and Avery. That might be the, the spiciest one there. They're at the Jersey Shore. For the summer, oh, the, so. <laughs> the home grounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm like, people don't know about this. People don't know about South Jersey Shore. I <laughs> love reading books that like talk about like Jersey. I read um, Emma Chase's "Getting Schooled" while dri- I was listening to it while driving. That whole series, I just I freaking. And it. she's talking about like the Canadian geese and like just random people and like how Jersey people are, and I'm just like, my. Oh, God, that's so spot on. Where are you from? (laughs) So what are you currently working on right now? Um, So right now I'm working on another uh, sports series. And it's actually, I don't know if it's mentioned in The Perfect First, but there's a rival school. Um, I think in the second book you get to know some of them. So there's a rival school called St. Francis U, but everyone abbreviates it to STFU. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> that I love is... the way you wrote those schools, too. Like, I was FU, now STFU. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, um, so that's the series I'm working on now. The first book came out earlier this month, and then the next book will come out in <clears> March, <throat> and then um, the book I'm working on right now will come out in, in May, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Nice. Yeah. I'm gonna like awesome. end up ready, like reading through your whole catalog. It's okay. Right. Yeah, your whole backlist. <laughs> awesome, awesome. But once you get to, um, once you are introduced to them, the character that pretty much everyone was asking me about later on in those books, yes, he does get a book, and that is the one I'm working on now. So you guys will see that if you continue to read, you know, no pressure. But no, no, he gets, definitely he gets a book. We already have that plan, plan, so it's, okay. it's, 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 it's in the works already. <laughs> awesome, <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> So what is your favorite thing to do when you're not writing? <clears throat> That's hard. Cause like, it's sort of my only hobby. <laughs> like the fact that no reading, 
I'm yes, the same reading, way. I'm like, reading. somebody asked that. And I was like, what do you do outside of reading? What's a hobby? And I said, I, I don't think I have anything. Sleeping? Does <laughs> that count? Like, yes. <laughs> eating? Um, I'm yeah. keeping the little humans alive. Mine is really keeping the little humans alive. But reading, I can read and do that. So yeah. <laughs> yes, audiobooks, one earbud in. Yeah. Yes, so like, yeah. yeah. So I think reading would be that would probably be it. Sometimes, like if there's a great show that we like as a family or something, we'll watch that. Like we all watch, you know, Ted Lasso, that kind of thing. But between like a day job, about the kids <laughs> actually getting to spend time with my husband and then writing, yeah, there's not there's not too too much time for for anything else. But yeah, reading that sounds like and, a perfect life to me. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we need another day dedicated to reading or yes. more writing or more hours in the day. Right. That too. <laughs> like, is it okay to send the kids to bed at four? <laughs> <laughs> Mine are little, so, you know, every five, se- mommy, mommy, mommy. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I read one sentence three times yesterday and I got up and I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm like, yeah. what did you need? Yeah. All right. Um, do you ever suffer writer's block? And if so, what do you do to help with it? So generally, it's not necessarily like I sort of classify them, I guess, differently. Um, not necessarily writer's block, but maybe story block. So there's something that the characters haven't shared with me yet. <laughs> and I don't know what's going to happen to them because I don't know that piece of information about them. So it might be something where I'm going on a walk and then I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, this thing happened to them when they were, like, 12, and that's what it is. And it's like, oh, my gosh, yes, I found it. And then it sort of everything else falls into place. It might not even be something that ends up on the page, but it gives me insight into who they are and how they react and what is, you know, emotional to them or what, you know, what has the biggest impact on them. And then I'm able to, to continue on with the story. So sometimes it just means putting things down, like taking a shower going for a ride, that type of thing. And sometimes it takes, you know, some time. It might be not just a day or it might be a couple weeks or something. But yeah, so it, it tends to be something generally with the character where I'm just going, why won't you, why are you being so secretive? Can you just like <laughs> fill me in here? We're friends. Like let's, <laughs> let's, let's work this out. And then, and then, yeah, that's usually, that's usually how it works. Oh, that's awesome. cool. And I'm sure like we have a lot of authors that are following our page, so it's, it's one of the questions that, like, we're friends with a few of them in real life, too, where yeah. it's like, what do you do? Right. And we, we talk to them like their characters are real people anyway, staking <laughs> claims on the boyfriends. Exactly. They're book boyfriends, but they could be real life, too. I'm okay with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we totally understand where that is, and these people are real to us. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes it's just this, um, talking it out. Like, I'll have, you know, if I have been editor or story, you know, someone that I work with or another author. And it's just sort of like talking about it out loud, like saying the words out right. loud is for some reason, sometimes different than in your head. And when you're saying it, you can sort of figure it out just by saying the words out loud. So sometimes that's, that's me where I have to like some, or my poor husband, like sometimes he's like, <laughs> well, is it this? And I'm like, no. And then he's like, is it this? I'm like, no, it's not that. Is it this? No. Like, he's like, you always say no. I'm like, but you're helping me. You're helping me. I swear. <laughs> And then he'll be like, how about this? And I'm like, no, but it's this, you know? And then I, I, he's like, oh, okay. I'm like, it's... So sometimes I go to other authors, so he doesn't always feel like I'm shooting down his ideas, but... <laughs> it's okay. He signed up the, through this for sickness and health. Right, <laughs> exactly. Oh, <yeah. laughs> through sickness and health and author troubles. That's exactly. right. You have to sign a contract. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us. This has honestly been like the best morning ever. Right. I got all of my laughs in before I even finished my coffee, and I loved it. Yes, thank you so oh, much for taking so much. the time to yeah. sit down with us and tell us about yourself and your books and give us more things to look forward to. Oh, it's been so much fun. Like, I cannot wait to continue this series and read the spinoff that I you know, mentioned. Me too. I have, I wrote it all down. I'm so excited. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for inviting me. And this was, this was so fun. And, you know, your questions were great. And it was, it's always, it's always a little bit like strange when I'm sitting here feeling like I'm being like, well, yes, my characters are so amazing. They're so fun. They're so awesome. But they are, though. For, for... They are. <laughs> well, thank you for making this so great and so fun. And I, I really appreciate it. And I really do like, you know, getting to share, share this with, with everybody. 
No oh, problem. Yeah, we're happy mm-hmm. to be able to have you share. And exactly. thank you so much for being our first guest on our yes, podcast. Yes, thank you. <laughs> everything, and the perfect first was literally like the perfect book because it was first everything. First book we read by you. You're the first, you know, author to come in, you know, talk with us. So I think we did great with our picks. Like it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Maya, and we're definitely going to keep messaging you from, you know, with our, <laughs> all of our shouty caps and everything when we continue this series. Yes. <laughs> Great. I look forward to it. Bye. Bye. Bye.